Today I will show you how to build an antimony pH meter. It would be suitable for a lab on a chip as it can be miniaturized. It has already been used in medicine as a gastric probe to measure the pH value of stomach acid. Further applications in medicine would be to measure the pH value of blood or urine. So let's get started. I picked up borosilicate glass tubing 8 by 1.5 and 6 by 1.5 mm from a local glass blowing company. I used a glass tube cutter to cut 100 mm of the 6 mm glass tube to size. Then I fire polished the sharp ends of the glass tube. The small apparatus is used to suck liquid antimony into the 6 mm glass tube. I strongly recommend using a graphite crucible, as the forming antimony trioxide is reduced back to elemental antimony when heated with carbon. The blue flame you see here is burning carbon monoxide. After the antimony had melted, I dipped the apparatus with a squeezed suction ball into the antimony and then released the ball so that the liquid antimony rushed into the 6 mm glass tube. Unfortunately, I lost this footage. Here you can see the antimony electrode after it has been removed from the apparatus. The copper wire is also melted in and thus creates a galvanic connection to the antimony. Next, I started with a copper, copper 2 sulfate electrode. This requires a copper rod with a diameter of 3 mm and a 50 mm long piece of the 3 by 1.5 mm glass tube. I used two component epoxy resin to glue the copper rod with soldered wire into the glass tube.
While the epoxy resin was hardening, I prepared wooden round sticks with a diameter of 3 mm. You can also use toothpicks if the diameter is suitable. The wooden round sticks were then placed in saturated potassium nitrate solution for 24 hours and then dried. Using a disposable syringe, one M copper sulfide solution was then transferred into the glass tube and subsequently sealed with a round wooden stick treated with potassium nitrate. Care must be taken to ensure that no air bubbles are trapped. Finally, a bit of shrink tubing and the antimony pH probe was ready to use. Now a little bit of theory. According to the Nernst equation, the half cell formed by oxidation states 3, SbO2 minus Sb2O3 and SbO plus involves H plus or OH minus and generates an EMF, which depends on the concentration of H plus over the entire pH range. The chemical cell formed during pH measurement is therefore... Theoretically, we should obtain a voltage between 0.136 volts and 0.979 volts, which corresponds to a pH value of 1 to 13. Is the pH value linearly dependent on the voltage? I can already tell you, no. So a microcontroller comes in handy to deal with it. As usual, I designed a PCB, had it manufactured by my PCB fab and populated it myself. And for the sake of completeness, the schematics of the PCB. Next, I made some off-camera measurements to obtain a function by regression analysis that can be used to calculate the pH value by the measured voltage. As you can see, the pH value is not linearly dependent on the voltage. Here you can see a time lapse of a few measurements I made with pH calibration solutions. The response is slower than with a conventional glass electrode. As the pH value also depends on the temperature, the PCB has a connector for a DS18B20 temperature sensor with a wide measuring range from minus 55 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay true, stay you.